June 1st, 1994. Time in a bottle with a broken heart. I stepped far away in order to see them unseating me. Pressure from every day becomes a nuisance of pure pleasure, but very much unaware of life situations. It's all around. The news, our pocketbooks, our lawmakers, and our jawbreakers, for the parasites are killing us. And when all is said and done, it turns on itself. Too early to stop, or is it too late to begin? Unaware of the blood pressure that would make cholesterol soar, heartaches and heartbeats to a different drummer, deep pocket fat cats warm and fuzzy to an idle touch, the blood pressure soaring for the platelets are unaware of a building block forgotten, earmarks and pork bellies, along with Chinese finger torture puzzles, neatly woven into a cylinder, a tight grip of hypnotic pull. The secret of the tiger is the timing of the bottle, for the bottle has its own secrets from a schism with a union gang. The flowering of a solution becomes the crystal of Medusa, for the flowering plant has dropped the seed of redemption. Maybe it's not too late to develop a green thumb, just as long as they don't develop a green middle finger. My writings can get harsh in a non-binding way, kind of like a lobbyist working for a pharmaceuticals platform pushing for a blood thinner of a Chinese origin. Don't know. Don't care. So what? What a terrific attitude, in a senatorial kind of way. Now, am I getting off track with this time in a bottle, or am I becoming the tiger with a broken heart? Parallel theories of a series of quantum logic. One in one is not eleven. Or is it? My mind has recouped from a long evening of washing through my thoughts the day before. Black coffee with a bowl of oatmeal do a body good. The tiger in me shall chase this dragon. This morning I shall recoup a conscious purchase of cultural beliefs from parallel dimensional worlds. At one time, accepted to another time. Denied, metaphorically speaking. Within my parlor sits a display case of old and new, surrounded by these four walls. There is a vortex, where time spends like a wormhole of conception of deception of tomorrow's to be. This story in the makings of me, the tiger, looking forward to the monsoon rains, it's just about one month away. Gentle, cool breezes captivate the landscape. It's so early in the morning. 5.14 a.m. Quails cooing and not realizing that they are the main dish on the desert menu. From a distance, I can hear early morning travelers getting ready for their long commute. Dusty trails and cigar-like smoke from the roads, twisting like a Tasmanian dust devil dissipating against an early morning sunrise. In a twisted way, it's nature's way of orchestrating beauty in the beast. Today was like no other day except for one thing, transferring power from one area to another. Power plays out like a Viking god of thunder, Thor. My hammer has a suction cup attached to the bottom of my walker. Thursday is but hours away. The muscle of my forearms and biceps shall gently hoist down my weak frame. Pounds of bionic brain power, caged within flesh-cold steel. Looking into the eyes of tomorrow is like looking into the eyes of a snake. There is always a fear of getting bit. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Evening is knocking at the daylight door. Strong desert winds have subsided. Darkness has encroached my landscapes. Only now will the soft desert breezes put me under the spell of another day. June 5th, 1994. The last entry of the journal. Morning has broken with the chaos of another day. The powerful surge of the crockpot has been diminished. The balance of flavor is the ultimate level. Coffee and a bowl of oatmeal do a body good. 
Thursday will morph into Friday within eight hours. It becomes a relative experience, as in time in a bottle. It is time now for me to embark upon my heavenly journey. Time is of the essence. 6.30 awaits me. Talking heads shall be all around me. Keaton Mortuaries Patricia A. Walsh Green Valley, Arizona 85614 Dear Pat, Thank you for your note of September 7th. At your direction, I called Mount Tamal Place Cemetery to inquire as to the need of your paying for their services in advance, or in fact those costs could be reimbursed from your trust after your demise. I spoke with Betty, who told me that the cost could be either prepaid or paid after the service has been rendered. I also told her of the plot location, names, etc. This is all in the order. In the conversation, I also mentioned that you had been quoted the price of $500 for the interment of the ashes. Her reply was that this must have been some time ago, and she gave me the following current prices. $1,000 